Okay, everybody, I guess this is part two. My Facebook app crashed, so let's try again. Facebook Live of Kilimanjaro Safaris. You can see the ride vehicles down below. Jill, hello. Jennifer, hello. All of you who were tuned in before. <laughs> Jeffrey says, I uh, can't lose everybody that easily. I'm not sure what happened there. Just Facebook decided to take a break. So glad that I'm back. No excessive noise, please. Red says, thanks for doing the broadcast. You are welcome. Happy to do it. Liz said, a little glitch. You are right. That was actually a big glitch. Jeff from Connecticut. Hello. <laughs> Richard, part two. You are right. Judy, good morning from Maine. Hello to you. Thanks to everybody coming back. Facebook decided to take a break. So we'll give it another shot. Blake says, loves the broadcast. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate that. He says, looks forward to being here next year. Tim Peterson's back. Cynthia, going to be here for her birthday in September. Happy early birthday to you. A lot of people getting loaded up into the safari vehicles. Jane says, line doesn't look too long. Uh, I think that's because I had the fast pass. The standby, 65 minutes. That's a good long time to wait for Kilimanjaro Safari. Betty, good morning to you in New York. Jane said, favorite ride, even better at night. It is a, it's a lot of fun to do the safari at nighttime. Definitely a different experience and a good one. I mean, is an expert? Oh, sorry, you're with them. No, with just them. one. Oh, just one? Okay, I'll put you in row number, let's see. Put you in row number four. I believe it's just a party of two, so you should be able to ride with them in the next row. Yeah. Thank you. Lisa, good morning to you. Dory says, looks packed. Yeah, it is. It's summertime, so it's busy. Renee from Northern California, thank you for joining. Sue's got 64 days to go. Courtney said, if Brianna is my guide, say hi from Portland and Kayla. All right, let's see if that happens. Tim said, need to do the rapids. Yeah, you know, that is one of the few attractions, maybe the only one I can think of, that I have not yet done. Probably not a good candidate for a broadcast. I see electrical failure in my future. Teresa, December 1st. Hope you have a great birthday. Thank <laughs> you. 
Debbie says, is it terribly hot? Uh, I, would, I would say yes. <laughs> it is really hot right now. It was 86, going to be up to 89. Humidity is about 527%. It is hot here. The sun is very intense, but this is what we get in the summertime. Kelly has a chilly day in Connecticut. Matt says, thanks for doing this. Glad to do so. Once I uh, get on the attraction, I'll be quiet so you can hear the narration. Everyone around me can enjoy the ride. We should be on in just a, just a minute. Tim put a zip bag over my hand. Uh, I like your thinking. I'm not sure that's going to work. I have gone on Splash Mountain, though, and the phone survives. All right, we're in. We are going to be going over some rough, rough, some of the bushes of pretty long thorns. And as we say here in Harambe, okay. twin day, which means Enjoy. let's go. So, Jumbo, everybody, Jumbo. My name is Kristen. I'm going to be your safari guide for this journey out through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now, I notice some of you back there have some cameras. You can feel free to have cameras out and ready to try to take pictures. If you're going to do that, I recommend high-speed settings. There are some areas on the reserve we are not allowed to stop. Even when we are allowed to stop, it's only going to be for just a few seconds. So an action or sport setting, something at a high shutter speed, even video, usually works the best. Now, I also recommend that you hold on to those cameras and all of your other personal belongings very, very tightly. We are not allowed to stop inside the reserve for anything that falls outside of the truck. That includes hats, sunglasses, cameras, cell phones, and pretty much anything else you might still want at the end of the safari. Please make sure that you're holding on to it. It could be a while before we see any dropped item again. Most likely, you will not be getting the item back in the same condition that you last saw it in. Animals are curious. They're not as gentle with things as we are. But we're going to go get started right away, heading deep, deep into the little Atiri forest. Now, forests like this one are from the many different types of antelope. Their natural colorings and markings can blend them in really, really well. we got to keep a sharp eye out. More than once, have been a few yards away from an animal before we noticed it hiding in the bushes. animal hiding in the bushes towards the front right of the truck. Kind of hard to see. It's on the top of the hill in the green bushes. You might see a brown ear sticking out. Based off of size and color, I'm going to say it's probably an okapi hiding out there in the bushes to the right. They're very reclusive animals, very shy. They were not first discovered by the Western world until about 1901, which is pretty recent, relatively speaking. As we head to the local watering hole, this is a great gathering spot for many animals. And there's some clearer views up here of some different types of antelope. Towards the front left corner of the truck, up on top of the hill in between the bushes, going to be on the right hand side of the road. This tall, light tan animal is a greater kudu, second tallest antelope in Africa. Boys stand about five feet tall at the shoulder. Girls, like the girl on top of the hill to the right, a little bit smaller, much larger, would be the black rhino towards the front left of the truck. Even from this distance, you can see that black rhino are incredibly large. They do weigh up to 3,000 pounds at their full growth. But while they get so very big, they can still get moving. They charge up to 35 miles per hour at their top speed. That's faster than this truck can go, so we're going to keep moving. Now back over to the right, there's a few more kudu walking around. The boys are all girls. Girl kudu do not grow horns. The boys grow horns up to 71 inches in length. 
It's almost six feet long, but it's incredible. The orange colored antelope to the right are bongos. There's a couple in the bushes to the left as well. Bongos are also known as the ghosts of the forest. They love to stay hidden away like this in the densely vegetated areas. Both male and female bongos will grow back swept horns. It helps them get through the dense vegetation they call home. I'm starting to think it might be time for us to head out of all this dense forest. I'd like to find a few larger animals, so we're going to head out to the Sabi River next, which is my favorite spot to go look for hippos. While hippos are still very large, they can be kind of hard to see. They spend most of their day in the water, so they don't get too hot in the African sun. Typically, we get much better hippo spottings just around the riverbed if I head to the left. The better is a relative term. They can stay completely under the water for about eight minutes at a time before they need to come up for air. And you might see a nose sticking out of the water to the right. There's a pair of them under the water there. Oh, buddy needs to be sitting down for me on a lap or on a bench. Set the sample for that's about all the languages I know, guys, so please stay seated. I know this is really exciting, but this is a moving truck. you got to stay sitting down. Sure enough, with two hippos to the right, there's a whole group of them to the left. Puts us in the middle of a group of hippos known as a bloat. Bloat hippos. They are considered nocturnal. They spend most of their day just kind of sleeping in the water. They usually climb out of the river at nighttime when it's cooler to eat food. Each hippo eats between 80 and 90 pounds of grass a night, and they are willing to walk about six miles down the riverbank, about two miles inland, to get all the food they're looking for. Now, I know it's the hippos in the water that are more exciting, but on top of the island, the big gray-white birds on the riverbank, those are pink-backed pelicans. They get the name because during mating season, their back just starts to turn a light pink color. They blush. I'm a little bit more worried about the next animal. We're about to drive over a really rickety bridge, and as we do, if you look to the left, those are Nile crocodile, and they will snap the bones of their prey with their powerful jaws that have a crushing force of over 2,000 pounds per square inch. Of African wild dogs roaming around through the edge of our reserve. 
They're a little harder to find because of their coloring. They're black, white, kind of an orange and brown color mixed together. I think there's a couple of them at the edge of the rock wall, all the way to the left-hand side of the rocks and under the bushes that, towards the back left of the truck, just to the left of the tree in the middle of the clearing. While these dogs look a lot like domestic dogs you'd be used to, they happen to be the most successful hunters of mammals in Africa. They'll chase their prey until their prey drops from exhaustion, which is kind of terrifying if you think about it. So we're going to head away from the dog and hang out with these nice grass-eating animals instead. Uh, running around out to the left, this is a herd of sable antelope. So far, I only see girls. The boys' horns get a little longer. They can reach a maximum length about five feet long. If we're talking about impressive horns, it's the Ancoli cattle out to the right. They're a little bit more, they're just more. These horns average three to four feet blank. They can reach up to six feet long. How much do they weigh? Well, the really cool part is not necessarily the length of the horn, but the fact that they're not solid bone. Inside of the horn is honeycomb shaped, which allows blood to circulate through the horn. When it gets up there, it releases heat and keeps these animals cooler making it kind of like their own personal air conditioning unit up on top of their heads. That's still not something I recommend. Those horns weigh about 20 pounds each, but it works for them. More beautiful views of the giraffe on both sides of the road. This puts us in the middle of the group known as a tower. Tower of giraffe. That's appropriate because they do start out pretty big. Um, I will tell you, we have not seen any baby giraffe on our reserve in a year or two, but baby giraffes stand about six feet tall when they're born. It means they can look into the eyes of any full-grown adult human standing in the grasses next to them. Or, if you're short, like me, baby giraffe could be looking over our heads. Just not today. To give you some perspective of how big the animals on both sides of the road really are, the armrests on the side of the truck are over six feet off the ground, so we're pretty high up in the air today. beautiful views of the giraffe on both sides of the road. In the distance to the right, the gray animals by the tree line are part of a group of white-bearded wildebeest. I say part of a group because wildebeest are one of the largest migrations in Africa. Usually there are thousands in a single grouping, so there's probably a lot more of them in the tall grasses and bushes nearby. We'll keep an eye out as we drive around. A few more giraffes out to the right by the palm trees. All of the giraffe we've seen today are Maasai giraffe. They've got these rougher edges to their spots, almost leaf-like in appearance. Different types of giraffe would have different types of spots. There's about nine different types of giraffe out in the world. But no two individuals are exactly the same. Each individual giraffe has its own unique pattern. Kind of like how people have their own unique fingerprints. You can tell them all apart from one another. Brings us out towards Monkey Point next. Now, Monkey Point gets its name for a group of mandrels that have taken up residence in the abandoned camp coming up on the left. Incredibly social amongst themselves. They're very, very shy to outsiders like us. We are going to be looking for motion. If you see one, there's probably a couple more right nearby. Be sure to find out. small for an adult male, but we know that's what he is because I don't see any other elephants in the area. Um. Adult male elephants are the only ones that wander off on their own like this. Females always stay in herds with the young ones up to the age of about 13. Once they reach 13, they're considered adults. The boys get pushed out of the family group to go off on their own or join a bachelor group. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, usually I take the road to the right to get further into elephant country, but it looks like the road's gone. So we're not going that way. Uh, there's another road kind of looping around the same general direction I want, so we're going to go try this one. It's all right. You guys all wanted to go on safari anyway, so we're going to go have an adventure. It's the bridge. Well, we found a bridge. 
bridge. It's useful, but this bridge is looking kind of beat up. So we're gonna go very carefully. And pulley pulley. Well, pulley pulley means very slowly. It's just to make sure it holds us the whole way. Feel free to cross your fingers or hold on tight. I'm sure it's groaning. Right, leave it right. childhood. Based on the size, that littlest one is probably between a year and a half to two years old. We know it's not quite two yet because I don't see any tusks. But baby elephants do weigh about 300 pounds when they're born. I know, it doesn't look over 300 pounds. It is, but quite a bit. The other elephants out there are huge. We are pretty excited to have a young elephant on our reserve. We've been waiting a really long time. It was a much anticipated birth. I say that because females are pregnant for about 22 months before they give birth. We've been waiting just under two years to first see the little one. There's also a flamboyance out to the left. That's a group of flamingos. These are greater flamingos, the largest and lightest pink of the flamingo species. Well, not little gray white birds. Those are ibis. It's a different species of bird. The flamingos also start out gray. You might see some where their heads are more gray at the edge of the island down to the left. They turn pink as they get older. Mostly flamingos are eating tiny brine shrimp. Brine shrimp's high in something called beta carotene. It's a pigment that eventually turns them pink. They start to turn pink at usually about six months old. They finish the transition between a year and a year and a half later. See if we can find even more animals to look at. And it, you know, it might look like there's not any animals in this area. There are. They're just hiding. Coming up on the right, up on top of the hill, in between the trees. I saw an ear boot. Yeah. There are white rhinos sitting up on top of the hill to the right, kind of hiding in between the trees. White rhino are much, much larger than black rhino. They weigh between 4,000 and 5,000 pounds of their full growth. They're also more social, so they tend to stay in larger groups. A group of rhino known as a crash. A crash of white rhino hiding in the tree line to the right. We'll see if we can get a better angle. But with the rhino up on top of the hill to the right, they're hi probably hiding out because to the left brings us near cheetah hunting territories. Cheetahs are daytime hunters. That makes them very hard to find. They tend to blend in really, really well. I think there are some out here. Now, easiest one to see is, or at least easiest one to point out the location of, is the one towards the front left of the truck, all the way up on top of the hill, all the way to the right-hand side of the clearing by the bushes. It's stretched out, laying down under the bushes out here. There's another one about 20 yards to the left of it by the broken tree stump. We're going to come straight out to the left, again at the top of the hill. They 
has been causing a lot of trouble in Namibia hunting livestock. The farmers out there have been hunting the cheetah to protect their livestock. That is not a good solution. Cheetah are endangered, so our reserve sports training programs to train really large dogs called Anatolian Shepherds and Cat Bulldogs. The dogs actually scare the cheetah away from the livestock without endangering the cats saving their lives. I think it's kind of neat. The dogs save my cats out there. Of course, cheetah are a little strange for large cats. The only large cat known to purr, they've also been known to chirp. I think it's kind of funny to hear cats chirping like birds. It's not all cute and fluffy. They're also the only large cat to have non-retractable claws. They're claws out all the time. Personally, I feel if you're running 60 or 70 miles an hour, having something to grip the ground with is probably a good idea. As we head around here, the head of the truck coming up on the left, I see some large burrows in the ground. Now, I know the holes are probably not real exciting, but these are most likely warthog burrows. Warthogs are the largest of the burrowing mammals. If they were feeling threatened, they back into a burrow with tusks facing outward. You never ever disturb a warthog back into a burrow. The tusks are very, very sharp. Right here, they right use them. Ostrich out to left. Ostrich are birds. She's got wings. She doesn't fly. They run. They reach about 40 miles an hour to be quick. Ostrich eggs towards the front right corner of the truck, and the grass is by the tree line. Largest of the bird eggs weigh about three pounds each. Unfortunately, most likely the leftovers are grouping since they're not paying attention to the eggs. Zebra. But some beautiful views of the zebra out here to the right. Biggest question I always get with zebra. Black with white or white with black? Well, for this particular type, it's the noses that give it away. Nice black noses. Means they're black animals with white stripes. They are more black than white. Of course, the really cool part is it doesn't really matter. The stripes go all the way down to the skin, underneath their coat, under their hair. They're still striped animals, which is kind of neat. I think there's another watering hole on the other side of the hill coming up on the right. So we're going to head around and see if maybe we can find another animal or two before we have to head back. towards the front right of the truck, you might see some yellow-billed stork. Yeah, that's not just a description, that's their name, they're the yellow-billed stork. They're carnivores. They eat snakes, frogs, fish, rodents, smaller birds, and any other meat that'll fit in their bill they are going to go for. The group of stork is known as a mustering, so it's a mustering of yellow-billed stork. Unfortunately, though, this is going to bring us to the end of our safari. Time flies when you're having fun. I know I had a blast driving it all around through Africa. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves as well because this does mean I do have to bring you back to the closest warden station to drop you off at. Don't worry. From there, it is a really short walk back to the Harambe village that you came here to get here. Or, if you're interested in some more up-close animal encounters, I highly recommend the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. Nice, easy walking trail you can even take strollers on if you have any strollers to pick up. Out there you find more African animals. Sometimes you can even find gorillas, like my name suggests. Well, of course, you're also welcome back here again anytime. Every single safari is different. The animals out there pretty much guarantee that for us. It sounds like we're pretty close to the village. Well, I am not going to say goodbye. If you find goodbyes much too sad, they are far too final. Instead, as we pull up to your the station, I am going to wish you Kaharini. Kaharini is a Swahili phrase. It means, well, Bye. it means goodbye, but it sounds a lot nicer, so we like to say Kaharini. Before I let you go, do I have any wilderness explorers on board my truck today? Can you explore the wilderness back there? Not yet? That's okay. If you're interested in becoming a wilderness explorer, it's actually very easy to do. You go to any number four on your park map. There's multiple locations to find a troop leader. Tell the troop leader that you'd like to be a wilderness explorer. they will hand you a handbook. Off you go to explore the wilderness. Throughout the day, you'll earn badges. Uh, to get your safari badge, you will need to know the name of this truck. 
The name of this truck is the Simba One. That's Simba, the Swahili word for lion. S-I-M-B-A-M, the number one. Uh, once again, my name's Kristen. You don't need to know that for the Wilderness Explorers. But it has been my absolute pleasure driving in all around. As I drop you off at this warden station, you are going to head up a hill, kind of to the left. That'll take you back towards everything else. You'll see stroller parking at the top of the hill. When you see stroller parking, if you head to the right, that's the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail that I was talking about. You can feel free to bring the strollers with you. If you head to the left when you see stroller parking, that's everything else. The only thing to the right of stroller parking is Gorilla Falls. It looks like our warden is ready for us. Everybody, thanks for joining me. Disney's Animal Kingdom, Kilimanjaro Safaris. The lions were not out today. They were probably in the air conditioning. But it was a fun safari. You got to see some zebra, got to see some giraffe. Uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. So if you enjoyed the broadcast, I always appreciate when people share it. It's a great way to get the word out. Uh, thank you also for the comments. It's a lot of fun speaking with everyone. Um, all the thumbs up and the hearts appreciate those as well so another reminder this coming Thursday and Friday if all goes as planned I will be covering the opening of Toy Story Land at Disney's Hollywood Studios uh, it's this coming Thursday and Friday hope to do plenty of live videos so um, if you enjoy watching the Facebook live videos top right hand corner you can probably turn on notifications and Facebook will let you know when I go live Facebook's uh, Facebook also posts those videos to my uh, Facebook page at facebook.com slash World of Walt. And they also go out to YouTube. So do a search for World of Walt on Facebook, or sorry, on YouTube, and subscribe there to be able to check out the videos um, as well. Appreciate everybody being here today.